Let's look at how to properly set up and configure the performance values for our air source heat pump input. So how are we going to uh, put in the right values, the right performance information for our heat pump system here? Well, the first thing to say about that is that the PHPP uh, in general has a relatively uh, simplified method for inputting the performance information of our air source heat pumps and also has its own proprietary uh, sort of worksheet or workbook in order to assess and calculate those performance values. So if you have been following along, we have on an air source heat pump being applied to our building. So we're going to use an air source heat pump for, to provide all of the heating. Um, and we're still currently using direct electric to supply all of our domestic hot water. So that's our current configuration. And uh, as I said, in this video, what we want to do is take a look at some of the, some of the um, custom customization and configuration we can add to that air source heat pump uh, product itself. So first of all, let's take a look at the PHPP and let's talk about heat pumps in the PHPP. So I'm back in my PHPP here. Let me go to my primary energy worksheet the primary energy worksheet. And in the primary energy worksheet, as we saw last time, we're going to use a heat pump for our primary generation type. 100% of our heating comes from the heat pump. 0% of the domestic hot water comes from the heat pump. And you can see down here, we currently are showing a COP, an annual COP of 1.48 for that electric heat pump. 100% of our heating energy comes from that heat pump, giving us a total site energy, purchased energy, for heating of 20.2 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. And then we can either evaluate its primary energy renewables total, or its primary energy total, or over on the right, its annual CO2 emissions using old-fashioned um, uh, grid emissions factors. We can talk about that later on. Okay, fine. So, so, so far, so good. Where does this 1.48 number come from? Obviously, the higher the COP, the less site energy you're going to consume, the better the performance of the building of the of the equipment. So where does this 1.48 come from? Well, let me scroll over to the right a little bit. And in the PHPP, notice that we have a whole worksheet dedicated to heat pumps, in particular, air source heat pumps. If we're working with ground source heat pumps, we could utilize this ground worksheet, but we've got this heat pump worksheet here. And notice that the uh, system has been set up here to use a default heat pump. So because we haven't given it any other information yet, we're using the default heat pump here. Uh, notice we are not using a heat pump for our hot water system, just for the heating system here. And um, if we were to scroll down a little bit further, uh, come down, 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 and down even further, we can find, there we go, entry number four default heat pump and we have a whole bunch of performance information over here in this table. This essentially describing the performance curve of the heat pump equipment itself. Obviously heat pumps are going to uh, operate at different um, efficiencies at different temperature levels. So different uh, uh, differences in temperature, different outdoor te uh, conditions are going to affect the uh, the um, performance of that equipment at that at that point in time. So this table here is um, uh, describing in a, a somewhat simplified fashion those performance curves. Okay, well, well where does all this information come from? How do we how do we get all this information? Well, if you um, are familiar with the um, uh, uh, passive house methods, you know that uh, in order to generate all this information, we're going to use the PHI heat pump worksheet for that. Well, okay, where, what is that? Well, let me bring up the website here. So if you were just to go to PassiveHouse.com, so the International Passive House Institute, um, the PassiveHouse.com, and you were to come over here to Literature and Tools, and let's see, come down to, uh, here we go, Tools and Aids. And in Tools and Aids, there's all sorts of stuff, but obviously one of the, mo the piece that we're interested in here today is this so-called heat pump tool, which you can just download. It's an Excel workbook, an Excel worksheet that allows us to calculate the, those, that COP table for different pieces of heat, air source heat pump equipment. 
So this little tool is currently a free download from uh, PHI, and um, you need to sort of access it outside of the PHPP. My understanding is that by the time PHPP version 10 is available, this will be built into the new version of the PHPP. But we're working in PHPP version 9.6 or 9.7. Uh, right now, and so we still have to access this as a as an external tool. So okay, so fine. So go ahead and download it, and that'll download, and then you can. It's just a zip file, so you can just unzip it on your computer and open it up as a as a um, Excel workbook. All right. Well, what does that look like? Well, let's come back over here. Let's come here, and so here's our heat pump. So once we unzip it, we'll have this PHI heat pump tool. And let's open this up and let's take a look at what we have here. All right, here we go. So here is our heat pump tool. So this is the heat pump tool. We have an introduction here with some um, instructions and some attribution and credits and such and whatnot here. Let me do this just to make things look a little easier. A little cleaner and the main the main worksheet here is going to be uh, this worksheet here now I know this worksheet is um, weird and whoops um, where to go there we go um, kind of chaotic uh, hopefully it's a lot more streamlined and uh, cleaned up by the time we get it um, uh, in PHPP 10 in any event take let's take a look at the um, upper right corner here where we've got some instructions. So here's some instructions. So these are the abbreviated instructions. Obviously, if you need additional support on this, definitely talk to your PHI certifier. Um, you know, whoever it is that you're working uh, with for certification, they'll be able to give you a lot more information and support on the use of this tool uh, for sure. But the short, short version is that in this spreadsheet, we're going to enter some manufacturer information. So the manufacturer of whatever the equipment is that we're using, it's going to give us some information around the COP or the sear of our uh, uh, heat pump equipment. We're going to enter some of that information in one part of this worksheet. Then we're going to input... Um, we're going to input a one piece of uh, important information that we need from the PHPP. So we'll 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 look at that. We need to um, we need to input a um, one one piece of of um, uh, critical information from from the PHPP. Uh, then this worksheet, this is an independent worksheet, is going to go off and calculate a bunch of information. And then we're go what we'll get as a result uh, is going to be down here in IP units and then in SI units. What we're going to get as an output is this table right here. This table can then be copied and pasted into our into our PHPP. So yeah, kind of a clunky workflow, um, a lot of copying and pasting, um, but again, it's not really integrated into the current version of PHPP. Hopefully in the future versions, it'll be uh, much cleaner, more automatic in terms of the workflow there. But okay, fine. All right, so what are, what are we going to enter? What are the important pieces of information here that we're going to enter? Uh, well, for our purposes, what we want to do, so we've kind of, I should note also, we've sort of customized this a little bit. So we have a bunch of individual, um, this is all Mitsubishi stuff. So, you know, different um, out, outdoor units from the Mitsubishi uh, heat pump systems here so that we can select them from this. But in any event, you can just input your model, input your uh, air flows, and input your... Um, uh, nominal power of the distribution system. Now, what is that? What is this number? Well, this number, as the as the um, key here says, is supposed to be taken from the PHPP. So this number is supposed to come from the PHPP. So these numbers up here come from the piece of equipment. Then this number comes from the PHPP. Okay, well, where is that number? Well, let's come over here to the instructions, and we'll take a look here. Uh, where do they tell us? Somewhere here. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. Nominal power of the distribution is taken from heat pump worksheet, cell M24. So we got to go to cell M24 in our PHPP. Okay, go back to the PHPP. Go to our heat pump worksheet. Come to cell M24. 
24. So M is this column here, 24 right here. Okay, nominal power of the distribution system, 3.69. So this is a calculated value based on all of our other inputs uh, from the PHPP. So, and that was, did I get that right? Is that, yeah, kilowatts. So 3.69, so we'd put it here, three point, we'd just come in and type it in, 3.69, and that's gonna affect and shape how all the rest of our values here get calculated. So if we were to now come over and come down and see our calculated values for that 36 uh, ton outdoor unit, we probably don't need a 36 ton outdoor unit, but whatever. Uh, let's just use that for now. Um, you could you know, obviously change, you know, change, input your equipment uh, from your manufacturer. In any event, we now get this information right here. So this is great. Notice that this structure matches this structure. We've got a, a column which is uh, source temperatures, sink temperatures, heating capacity in kilowatts, and then a calculated COP. And so that's what we get from this heat pump tool, right? And so the notion here is that you t grab all this, you say copy, then you come in here, and then you say paste. Paste special text. Whoops, did I do that right? Oh, right. Uh, let me do it this way. Okay, I can do it. If I just say copy, come in here, say paste, and then obviously we don't want it to override all the formatting, so I'll say uh, match the destination formatting. Uh, we should enter zero for the sink temperature for, for all of these custom heat pump tools, and then we could call this whatever we want. We call this uh, my custom heat pump uh, unit. All right, so we've got a custom performance based on that heat pump worksheet. Again, if you want to understand more about this heat pump worksheet, um, you know, talk to your certifiers, take a look at the instructions here. That's not really what we're going over in this lesson. Um, uh, but take a look at it. Again, you can download it for free. Um, and, and the general way that you use it is you input the information that you want, and then you just copy and paste this information from, um, from down below. Well, okay, but what I've done here, and we've talked about this in past lessons, what I've done here is I've now input a bunch of information into the PHPP. Well, I don't like that. That's not, I don't want to be entering information in the PHPP. I want to be entering information in my grasshopper scene. Okay, so can we do it in grasshopper? Absolutely. So for instance, whoops, let me, let me go back to my heat pump. I'll go back to my heat pump worksheet. I'll select my performance information. I'll say copy. And now let's go back to our grasshopper scene. And can we input this information in our grasshopper scene somehow? Yes, we absolutely can. Notice, so we could, first of all, we could input all this information one column at a time. Notice we have an input for the source temps, sink temps, heat capacities, kilowatts, and then the calculated COPs. So we could absolutely input that as a sort of individual set of columns. Or we could input everything here um, if we're taking information from the uh, heat pump tool. So for instance, if I come in here and make a panel, I paste all of that information. So there's all that data. Maybe we do it slightly different. We'll do it as a multi-line. And um, notice if I come in here, notice that I have all this structured data. This all comes from oops, where is it? My, my heat pump tool, right? Minus 27, minus 23. Minus 27, minus 23. Right, so this is the same structure separated by tab stops there. So I just grabbed it, copied it, pasted it. Now I can input all of that into this from PHPP input. This guy is smart enough to sort of take all of that because it's always going to be the same format because I, you know, we know that you're copying it from the heat pump worksheet. It's going to split it up and it's going to slice and dice it and it's going to repackage it. And so now in our PHPP, now in our PHPP, if we come up here to our heat pump, notice minus 27, minus 23, all of that data is flowing through into our PHPP from Grasshopper. So I do not need to copy and paste anything into the PHPP directly. I do need to use the heat pump tool, create the data, and then input it using our Grasshopper model.
Now there's a couple other things we should uh, change. We should change the name and we should change the source temperature here. So let's go back to our grasshopper scene. Remember the source temperature should always be zero for these custom um, these custom elements and then or these custom heat pumps and then the name we can call it I don't know we can call it Ed's custom air source heat pump. Obviously if it was you know Mitsubishi, uh, you know, uh, uh, MXZ, da -da -da -da, 30 NA, you input that properly there, whatever. There's Ed's custom heat pump with all my custom generated performance information. I have a zero for the sink temp uh, as per the heat pump um, uh, instructions. Again, check out the heat pump tool from PHI. There's a whole bunch of instructions here. There's some additional documentation about how it works. There's plenty. There's also, I should note, other ways that you can use this tool. Notice you can input things like um, SPFs or, or your um, uh, EFs um, as well uh, in order to convert to COPs. So it's all about, you know, different types of input data all being converted over to a standard profile, which is what you see right here. So we have our custom heat pump flowing through into our project. Now there is a there are just a few more things. Let's just take a look very briefly. There's a few more things we need to do in order to use this custom air source heat pump tool. So let me zoom back in on the instructions up here and let's just do let's just round out this video by looking at these last couple things. Oops. All right, so First of all, scroll over a little bit. Oh, Jesus, this thing really, there we go, okay. So first of all, uh, what else do we have to do? Make sure there's no storage for heating. Yep, fine. Temperature of the sink should be zero for those. Uh, we copied and pasted. Now this last step, step number five. At the top of the heat pump tab, choose that you entered split air to air heat pump from the drop down menu and choose radiators from the drop-down menu in cell M22. Huh, all right, let's go back to our PHVP. So cell M22, come up to the top here. Here's column M, row 22. So we need to set the selection of distribution system from supplier heating to radiators. So in order for this uh, tool to work, this is a, a, to be super clear, this is a work around, right? The PHPP version nine was not designed to have these types of air source heat pump um, tool um, equipment used. And so this whole thing that I'm showing you is a work around. It's clearly a sort of back backdoor method of entering this information. Um, Again, hopefully the version 10 will be updated to include this more natively. So in any event, we, in order to get this to work, we are supposed to set this to radiators. Okay, so, all right. But again, we don't want to set it here. We want to set it in our grasshopper scene. So let me come back to grasshopper. And we want to set that somewhere. Where do we set that here? Well, we don't set it anywhere here. So we're going to need a new component in order to set that information. And if I come up here to my pH tools ribbon, come to 01 model, come down here to heat pump, air source heat pump options. This is where I'm going to find that information. So the ability to set the type of configuration, it's all going to be in our heat pump options here. Notice we have things like design forward water temperature, heat pump distribution, power, heat pump controls, and groundwater information, et cetera, et cetera. But the one we're interested in here is this heat pump distribution. And we have to set this as per the rules in the heat pump tool to number two, radiators. Okay, so we'll set this to two radiators. Say so that's the type of distribution. And then all I have to do is take my heat pump options and input those into the heat pump options. So options connects to options. And then as soon as that has flown through, we will see that update in our PHPP. We'll go back to our PHPP. Notice now Ed's custom air source heat pump using radiators as the distribution method. So that is pretty good. There is just one last piece of information we need to input here before we are all done. And that is that we need to set the temperature of the in the domestic hot water tab and I'm not gonna lie I don't know why we have to set this I'm not sure what this does but again this is all a work around so let me bring up that PHI 
heat pump tool. And so we're done here. So let me scroll over to the left. All right, over here, here we go. Design forward flow temperature. Notice this is to be inserted in the PHPP. So we're in um, uh, SI units. So 24 degrees Celsius needs to get inserted as the design forward flow temperature in the PHPP. What the heck? What does that mean? Well, if we come back to our PHPP, come over to our domestic hot water and distribution tab. So we're going to leave the heat pump worksheet, go over to domestic hot water and distribution. And up at the top here, notice we have an input under space heat distribution for design forward flow temperature. And we have an input uh, available here. And as per our heat pump tool, we should be, this is all calculated uh, by the tool, we should be inputting a value of 24 into this cell right here. Again, don't, I don't know why we have to do this in the domestic hot water worksheet in order to make an air source heat pump work. But again, this is all a sort of workaround in order to add this piece of equipment to the uh, older version of the PHPP here. So, okay, fine. All right, we'll just follow the instructions. We'll do it that way. How are we going to input 24 degrees Celsius into this input right here? Well, luckily for us, we don't have to really do, we don't have to kind of um, worry about any of that. Uh, all we have to do in our grasshopper scene is just set this design forward water temperature to 24. This is smart enough to know that it goes in the domestic hot water worksheet, even though we're working on heat pumps. And, uh, okay, fine. All of that's going to flow through. So we go back to our PHPP. Notice that's been set to 24. And so now we can take a look at our heat pump tool. So our heat pump tool here is set to radiators. We're using Ed's custom air source heat pump. If we were to scroll down a little bit past all this, we would notice that uh, our heat pump is supplying uh, 3,000 kilowatt hours per year, um, of our heat and then it is falling a little bit short so it looks like actually we need a slightly bigger heat pump about 200 kilowatt hours a year are coming from a backup direct electric resistance coil uh, so we could actually use a bigger heat pump maybe we need a slightly larger heat pump for this building the way it's currently configured in any event, if we were to come back to our primary energy now primary energy renewable um, worksheet notice now we're still using heat pumps for all of our heating. 100% of the heating is coming from our heat pumps. And so under electric heat pump, we have 100% of energy of our energy coming from it. But notice now we have a COP of 3.51. So we've significantly improved the annual COP of our air source heat pump for our heating system. As a result, our total purchased site energy is much lower than it was before. And therefore, our primary energy and our primary energy renewables are also much lower than they were before. So we've successfully customized our heat pump. We've got a much better heat pump working in our system right now. Um, as I said, it's maybe a little undersized. Maybe we need a slightly larger one so that we're not getting quite as much oops, quite as much um, uh, from the uh, direct electric system. But you could uh, configure that to your heart's content. You could you know, use a three and a half ton unit, a four ton unit. You could sort of input whatever equipment you need um, using that exact same process. So you're going to use that heat pump tool in order to configure the heat pump equipment for your project here. So I know that is quite confusing. Um, I 100% agree with you. Uh, again, that's all sort of a workaround because the PHPP version 9 really wasn't designed to have these air source heat pump systems, um, uh, these sort of split systems uh, modeled. And um, uh, so again, hopefully in version 10, we'll have a sort of cleaner and easier method there. But the long and short of it is just follow the instructions on that heat pump tool. Make sure you go through it carefully, read all the instructions, um, and follow the, follow the templates there. And again, if you have any questions at all about that tool or how those numbers are being calculated, you know, that's exactly the kind of thing you talk to your certifier about. Um, they'll be able to answer all of those questions in quite a bit more depth if you do have uh, follow-on questions about the exact values that you should be using. But once you know the values you should be using, Inputting them here in the this in the grasshopper workflow is relatively straightforward. You just enter all that information. Again, you could choose to enter it as individual lists, or you could just drop it in as one big uh, chunk, copied and pasted directly from that heat pump tool. 
So I think we'll leave this one here. Uh, we have now successfully modeled our heating system for the building. So when we come back in the next series, we'll turn our attention to cooling and figure out how we can add different methods of cooling to our project here.